right, Coach, you can start us off. Yeah, I appreciate y'all coming out this afternoon, and uh, I know we all want to ask me some questions and recap the season, but uh, before we did that, I just wanted to uh, share a message uh, to our fans. Uh, over the last few years, this program has, has been through a lot, and the people that, uh, that are the most important, our players and our fans, they didn't sign up for any of it. Uh, y'all don't deserve any of this. Uh, I appreciate the fact y'all have high expectations, but nobody's got more expectations than I do. Every time I walk on that field, I expect to win. I know exactly what it takes to get us out of this. When I came here in 1995, we were on probation. And I was a team captain in 97 and 98 when we were coming out of it. I know what it takes to turn programs around. When I went to Tennessee in 2006, I was part of a turnaround there. I went to, I went to Duke in 2008, and I was part of a, one of the biggest turnarounds in college football. And then we did it again here in 2012. We will win here. Is it going to be easy? No. Is it going to take a lot of hard work? Absolutely. But for the first time since 2014, I can walk in a room, into a, into a living room, and not talk about bowl bans or sanctions. I can sell everything that's great about Ole Miss. And everybody in this room and everybody that I'm talking to knows what makes Ole Miss special. That's what makes Ole Miss special, and that's family. And it's more important now than ever that this Ole Miss family move forward together. But we will get this done, and we will win here. And I want to open it up for questions. All right, raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone to you. Matt, there's a lot of rumors swirling around Phil Longo pursuing other jobs. What's your take on all that? And is it true? And have you had any results? No, I, no results. But I, I think when you when you have back to back top ten offenses, the coordinators are going to get looks, and, uh, and he is getting looks. But I think that's that's natural when you when you have really good offenses, mm -hmm. you, you have coordinators interviewing for head job. Kind of following up on Chuck's question, in the event that he doesn't get one of those jobs, is he safe with you, with your staff, or is that something that you're still evaluating? Yeah, no, I mean, you're always evaluating. I, I, think, I think we're really good on offense. We had two top ten offenses. Are there things we got to fix in the red zone? Absolutely. And, and again, I know what good red zone offense looks like, and I'm going to fix that. You know, I was joking. I love, I love Luke Logan, but I want to kick an extra points, not field goals. And that's, and that, and, but again, we can, we can get that fixed. There's a lot of people that struggle getting to the red zone. So, you know, I mean, we, we have a good offense, but we got to fix the red zone, and we will. Matt, regarding your opening speech there, that's a level of uh, emotion and passion, I guess, that uh, we didn't see during the regular season. What's, uh, what's changed in how you address folks? Well, just, just the fact that I did it here in front of the camera. That, you know, that, that, that's me, and it's who I am. I'm an emotional person. Uh, probably my biggest strength and my biggest weakness, but it's who I am, and I think it's important to show that. You know, I, I think when you go through tough times, it's important for me to stand up here and be positive and to keep our team together, but I want our fans to understand and know what, what's going to happen here as long as we stick together and keep working. And I know Friday you kind of put out a comment with a statement of a little bit of a grip moving on, but what kind of led into those decisions and when did those decisions and talks kind of begin with him? Again, I mean, you're, you're, you're always evaluating. And, you know, my, my focus right now is on finding the best defensive coordinator for this program and recruiting. Recruiting is the lifeblood of this program and finding the right fit at defensive coordinator. And that's where my focus is. We, I mean, we don't have long until that the early signing period, and, and that's going to be huge for us. But finding the right fit at D.C. and recruiting, that's where my focus is right now. Coach, the last couple of days you've been in some homes. What is the reaction now that you're not talking about bowl bans and probation? I'm, I can't tell you how refreshing it is. Again, I've been there Sunday night, Monday night, and earlier this morning. I'm in homes, and for the first time, I can sell Ole Miss. I don't have to sit there and defend, well, well Coach Luke so-and-so said that y'all couldn't go to bowl game this year, this, this, and that. You don't, all you have to do is sell Ole Miss and sell our future. And, and again, our, our recruiting class is going really, really good. And people see opportunities to come in and play. And it's just, it's really refreshing to be able to sit down and not have to worry about that and try to always defending yourself. You can just go sell all this. 
Matt, does the early signing period put any sort of clock on finding a defensive coordinator? How do you balance that? It, it, it certainly raises the level of difficulty up. But you can't put that in front of finding the right person. So I think I have to find the right fit. If it works out where I can get them before the signing, that's obviously best. But I'm not going to put that ahead of finding the right fit. Matt, some of this may be sanctions related, but you guys as a program have struggled to recruit Memphis successfully the last several years. When, when you evaluate that, what, what do you see? Is it, is it personnel related? Is it approach related? Is it, is it probation related? You know, one of the first things I did when, when I took over here was I brought in Tyler Siski. And he, his approach to recruiting and our new recruiting, the way we're doing things is so much more efficient. And I, and I love it. And it's paying big time dividends. And there, there's guys in Memphis right now that we're, that we're targeting and going after. But, but I love what Tyler Siski's doing, and, and, and I hope it pays off this year. Matt Blair, um, you keep talking about trying to find the right fit at defensive coordinator. To you, what is the right fit for this program right now? You know what? I, I think you have to get in front of people and talk to them. Because I, I want somebody that's called it and that's experienced and they have a plan. But that's not just where I mean. This is the Southeastern Conference. And you have to have somebody that can stand in front of a room and command the defense. They it can capture their hearts and their minds, and, and but also is schematically very, very competent. And, and so I think but it's, it's the right fit. It's not just one or the other. It's the right fit, and that's what I'm looking for. Matt, you touched on, on Phil. Are, are there any other movements on the staff that you anticipate? Uh, again, right now, because of the early signing yeah. period, all I can focus on right now is finding the right fit at defensive coordinator in this, in this 2019 recruiting class. That, that's where my focus is right now because that's all I have time for.